Hi everyone. Um, we'll we'll just get started right now because there's a lot of stuff to do and um, that Harrison wants to cover. So I wanted to welcome you guys to the Warrior Painters live demo and Q&A with Harrison. Um, I've worked with him before. He's really awesome. And he'll be teaching a class at uh, Warrior Art Camp. I'm dropping in the link in the chat. So um, check it out if you're interested and I'll let him take it away from here. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? You guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Sweet. Oh uh, yeah, so um, I'm Harrison, as, as I said before, I'm a Nigerian artist based here in Sydney at the moment, working on a specific project, well, working with really, really cool people. And uh, I've been around for a bit and here's some stuff I've worked on. Um, I got my head started in the industry through Kipo. Angela had me to work in Kipo as a BG paint artist, which was really, really good. And I had fun working on that. I um, worked with a lot of awesome people too. I also worked on Dad, my dad, Bounty Hunter. It's a really great team. Um, had the opportunity, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to work on the Boyd Mall, the Fox and the Hoss, um, as a BG paint artist too. So you can see the, the style of the, of the movie itself is really watercolor y but trying to emulate the style of the, of the author in digital, that was a really, really interesting and fun project. I also, I also had the opportunity to work on a couple of shots, animated shots that came out last year, our song and Star Wars Visions as a visual development artist, created some programming concepts and whatnot. And I also had the opportunity to work as a visual development artist too on Kizazi Motor Generation Fire on a couple of projects. I was lucky enough to production and design one of them. Um, I've also been a beachy paint artist on a couple of commercials that you've probably seen around. Um, the Chobani, Dear Alice, as a beachy paint artist. Um, I've also worked with the Lion in Star Wars and um, this. Really, really nice ad from Agamama, Boat to Soul. Boat to Soul is really, really good. Just painted mushrooms and and trying to make it feel more fantastical, like big mushrooms in the forest. You could check it out if, you, if you're keen on seeing that. Um, just a quick shot one. The the shot I was able to production design, I got a lot of work and design. Got nominated from Annie a couple of weeks back. So that's really cool seeing. Um, most of the work we put together, the care recognized. So I just wanted to touch on that for a bit and the type of work I, I love to do. Um, my personal work, which is where I try to think, I don't know if you guys do that a lot, where I just want to do stuff I want to see, you know, um, apart from this little broccoli guy here. Um, here's some of the personal projects I've done for myself. I just like research. Um, stuff, trying to get my process going, you know, um, trying to explore stuff, you know. Um, I don't take design too serious, you know. Um, for example, the, the, the order of the bottom left-hand corner, it's like, a, it's like a medieval house that has a florist shop, but it's like from the inhaler. I had a hill on my table, so I just used that as a reference for the building and just took that just to explore. There's also the, the one on the far right is the avocado inspired building. You can call an avocado into half. I'm like, oh, what, what can I do with this? You know, turn the big circle thing into a, into a big town hall and just try to explore with that. Um, I also play around with traditional tools once in a while. I've not touch watercolors in a bit, but I do play around with them. And I love to like draw a lot, try falling in love with it, drawing a game. Because there's, there's the thing that happens to you when you just go digital, you always want to go like clean lines. I don't know if it happens to you guys as well. It's, it's crazy sometimes. Yeah, but I, I, I'm a huge fan of architecture. I love it. Um, I love to explore cultures like just treat them in a more fantastical way so most of this you're seeing here it's like me 
reading up stuff, researching, and just trying to find new new possibilities with the designs. You know, like there's this one at the bottom, bottom left. It's like just stacking up pins to see if you can make the shop down the fence. Um, yeah, um, here's more personal work and more explorations I've done, which is funny because like the, the one on the far right, um, I started up digital, digitally and I wanted to get this watercolor feel to it, right? After I saw it, I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, if you zoom in digitally, like, oh, this looks messy. So I was like, no, I'm going to go in and detail it. I fell into the trap of detail, which which was really really painful. Why? Well, I guess um, I guess I'm, I have to learn from that, you know. And that's one thing I found out, like trying to emulate watercolors digitally. It's like you need to learn to let go. Just let go. You don't you shouldn't you should care but not care too much. I don't think that makes sense. Um, so the main reason why we're here is the demo, and um, I'll, I'll show you what I have learned, because I do a lot of studies, I've been making a lot of studies where I just take photos and just explore stuff, because that's the only time I feel I could try things out, I could fail, and I love to fail a lot with the studies, because there's no, it's not, it's not high stakes, you know? I just feel a lot doing that, and um, and from there I grow basically. So the other early watercolor things I did in Photoshop a couple of years back, you know, it's like you get this huge Kyle where I start watercolor pack, and you're like, wow, I can do this, you know. And you're going in and you make it, and it feels like watercolor, but it doesn't look like it like it starts to feel stampy you know and i and of course there are ways to control it to avoid that but at the time when i was exploring it i didn't know you know that much i was like oh yeah just get all the textures in everywhere it looks like it i'm just yeah so all that was in photoshop and um a couple of years back so while exploring i came across this software called rebel Maybe, if, I don't know if people in the chat have heard about Rebel before, but it's one of those um, softwares that actually has a good, or great, it tries to emulate traditional tools fantastically. You know? um, so I, I took a stab at that. It had the, the watercolor simulation of Rebel. It was fantastic. There's a free demo. Um, there's a free trial version of it. You can download it and play it around with it. If you're interested, it's, it's not so pricey. You just get it, get the the regular version of the pro version. The pro version has a um, has a Photoshop plugin where you just like click one button and it takes your layer or your PSD file straight into Rebel, and you can have a conversation with Rebel and Photoshop at the same time. You know. Um, also, I think um, Adobe Fresco. If you have Windows or uh, on iPad, you could just play around with it. The live brushes there are fantastic too. So when I found Red Bell and I had Fresco at the same time, I started playing around with them, seeing, oh, like I could mix the colors this way and get really, really interesting results and not just stamp, you know, because. I don't think this time thing looks really, really cool. Um, so what I've come to realize over time is we're all digital artists, right? We don't all use, um, what is it? We don't all use just Photoshop or just Procreate or just Blender. Sometimes you go like Blender to Photoshop and back into Blender or Photoshop and Procreate and back into Procreate. I don't know if it happens. For some of you, but I, I find the fact that the digital artists should be able to let these tools have um, conversations with themselves and see what we can bring up. So, so that's what I've been doing with Photoshop, Fresco, and Reveal. And because I feel very, very comfortable in Photoshop and the colors, like I can easily solve my colors in Photoshop, I feel more comfortable there. So I don't mind starting in Photoshop 
then I'll move to Fresco depending if I'm on the road or I move to Rebel if I'm on the computer, you know? And, um, and yeah, back and forth with these softwares, you, you come up with really, really fantastic results. I've had people also talk about like Clip Studio or Krita and how they don't like the drawing tools in maybe Photoshop and they prefer how Clip Studio draws, you know? Or Clip Studio has this one beautiful tool they just like lasso feel and Photoshop doesn't have that. Yeah, so I think people I, I think people should actually I encourage people to try using multiple softwares to, to make work. And so like comparing the my first watercolor try with at least a more recent version, you know. They're still it's still good, but I don't really like the first one anymore. It's just like one big texture as I mentioned before. I don't just not to sound like a broken record, I'm nearly good to myself. It's just one big texture, um, stamp here, stamp there, trying to smudge edges and whatnot. But what if I started in Photoshop, I took it to Rebel and brought it back to Photoshop. So that's, that's the results you see on the right, which is the newer things that I've, I've been doing. And um, yeah, so that's it. If any questions you could ask me, or if not, we could just move straight to the demo and let's let's demystify this whole thing I'm talking about. Um, as regards to the demo, I dropped in a PSD file. If you have access to the PSD file, you could check the reference out and made a beautiful chicken scratch of the reference. You can check it out. Um, if you want to paint along, I also drop my brushes. We could start in Photoshop. I'll move on to the Rebel. If you guys are really painting along, I could share the process in Rebel again, and we all just make this really fun for each of us. That's the image. It was really large one. I just cropped it into a square size. No need to paint this entire thing except one to stay for the next one week. But if you guys want to stay for the next one week, that's also fine. Though. Yeah. Um, so I was just going to jump into, into Photoshop now and we'll just start the demo. Very sweet. Um, if you guys have access to the Photoshop files, please let me know so we could just, um, I could go through some things and we could talk about how I prepared the files and my um, logic behind how I tackle these things. Please, if you have questions, just hit me up straight so we could have this. We could have a more lively session. I mean, while we're waiting for them to get the files, can you maybe talk about what you were thinking about when you're doing these sketches? I know the watercolor um, approach may be really different than like a normal painting process. So um, because you know both traditional and digital, like how does it translate into this digital format? Yeah, the the one thing I found out while trying this is, you know, when you paint in digitally, right, we, we tend to just go solid. When I mean solid, it's like one big flat color. And you cover up, you don't you don't build your layers up, right? And you cover up what's behind it. And you can just easily go back to the previous layer and suck that out, which um really takes away from the feel of making it traditional. So what we're trying to do is stack layers up in a really, um, I don't call it smart, but nice way where what's below, you, you tend to see what you've laid below would show through. So you, you want to use the luminosity of the layer below the one on top. So you're just going to build, it's like stacking things together. Um, if you've ever painted what's it called traditionally, which is a painting, you know, you have to plan ahead a lot. And in Photoshop, it's the same thing. The main thing we want to take away here is control. Because traditionally, you cannot control stuff in what's it called. You could try to put a mask there, a masking fluid, and like paint on it. And if you go back with a super wet brush, 
like loaded, if you, like it's been loaded with so much water, it probably starts to create this cauliflower effect on the, on your paintings, which sometimes may be cool if you wanted to do it on purpose, but most times it is not. So for digital, digitally, you will be able to control it. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get back control from this crazy medium that we have. And that's the benefits I feel like with trying to emulate this digitally. And you also want to create this um, really, really nice, happy accidents. You know, it's like, um, I'll show you as a parallel. Now it's like, have some references like that I've taken from Instagram, people like follow people. If you guys want to see, if you guys want to get this piece of like share too, it's like, how do you create something? Um, like this, you know. Wow, that's beautiful. Bro. How do you create something like this digitally? You know, it's like how do you get this to lap properly? How do you create this happy edges? So that's what we're trying to to create with control, basically. Um, I'll go through my. Have you guys been able to get through the PSDs? I can just ramble so we could just get stuff going. And do you have any idea if they're able to control the PSLs yet? Mm, I think they're ready, so you can start. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Um, so what I've done with the PSD is I have a sketch, the ref, the fine. What I've done is I've tried to deconstruct my reference in just like big shapes. Push them, pull things. Um, I'll draw the reference to, see, to make you see, make you guys understand how I'm saying it. Um, I'm just looking for basically big sh statement shapes. So it's like, I have this really nice shape here. And I'm trying to connect that here. So that's what we're having the shapes here, just simplifying stuff basically. Um, I'm also trying to get like a good ratios and proportions here, so I have to like push this building and down just to find a nice design. I still, I still even pushed it further when I moved onto the silhouettes, right? And also, what I've tried to do is prepare every element in the scene with the power of Photoshop on an individual layer. Because these are the things we won't be able to get traditionally. It's like if you you want to get a really clean clean edge traditionally with watercolor, it's probably going to bleed in, and you don't want that every time. You want to be able to get control. So what I've done is, if you get into the selections layer, it's like every single item is on a different layer. We could always call back to the selections when we want to detail things out. We'll start off really like broad and blend things together, but we just want to get into details. We want to have the selections. Um, the other way I, I approach painting, I don't know if everyone does this, this way, it's like flatten the silhouette and I try to design the light shapes. I purposefully left out um, the light shape on this tree so I could show you how I approach that. This tree here, I'll show you how I approach that with the brushes I have. And what we want eventually is to have these light sheep as one huge selection that we could use every single time. Because we watercolor, now we use this um, the image for example. Most times, the, the highlights are usually just white, it's the paper. And Sometimes you see the paper seep through in dark edges and in places that you don't expect. So you, you're using the paper to your advantage, the white on the paper to your advantage. So the white, you, you're not painting it, painting it in highlights like um, gouache or any other way you paint it digitally where you just go in and just make one old highlight, you know. So you have to plan these things out. So that's why we want that selection. Um, some of these images here, I would love to use as reference to 
um, to see how we could work with our trees, you know, blending shapes better, try to create this type of effect in our image. So we give it a more quote unquote natural look. All we're just trying to do is just cheat our way through, cheat our way to make people believe that this is a watercolor painting, but it's done on the computer, basically. Um, yeah, same thing here. It's like leading edges all going into one, and we will, we will try to create that in our own painting. Um, so and I, I love to use layer masks. And, um, another settings I have on my Photoshop is a hotkey. If you if you have like the whack on the center thing, there's a there's a hotkey. Sorry, I'm just trying to get work on the I switched my uh, one of my keys on my whack on pen. So if I make a selection, I just feel and it deselects. That way, um, that way it's easy for me to just make big selections instead of always going back to my keyboard and like option backspace and control D. It's just slowing me down. So that's another thing. So just in case you see see me start to like just make selections that automatically feel it, just know that's what I'm doing. Um, yes, yeah, so let's just get into that. Let's see if I can create. Uh, some shapes here, a right shape, following the reference. I, I love to use like the polygonal lasso tool and sometimes I switch from the polygon now to like the freehand by holding um, the option key. I think that's Alt on Windows, yeah. So just trying to create a really, really interesting shape. If you're not comfortable using the lasso tool, you could always just use this like big pointy round brush I have in the brush pack. Gives a really nice edge to things. That's how I approach like cutting this, like creating this huge negative space. And what I'm trying to do with the light patterns too is find um, ways where they connect to each other. Like so, this big pattern can connect to this one, and they're all just having. There's an excuse for them to meet, even if in the reference there's no. They don't meet every single time. But I just want to create that opportunity where the, where the negative spaces here, the white and the shadows, they meet each other. Um, I also have a layer of people. I'll probably just flatten it all into one shape. If I if I want to go back to detailing them, I could just create the selection on the individual characters and do that. You know? But what I'll do is I'll flatten it in with the with the lights pattern here. I think I'll just do that. Give me a moment. Um, I have a quick question. I see when you were um moving your brush, it was like tracking. I think some people don't understand. Like, are you using an art pen or Wacom? This? No, 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 no. Um, like when you were using the brush, it rotates with how you angle the brush. Oh yeah, I'm using an art pen, and uh, the the brush itself has that settings to them to it. So it's like if you go into the the brush settings here, it has tilt to it. Which we have in shape dynamics, probably have tilt to. But I'm also using it an art pen too. Yeah. So if you guys want to try to um do that, you can. Uh, if you have an art pen, you do it on rotation. But if it's um just the normal Cintiq Pro, it's gonna be um I think it's just tilt. 
So you guys yeah, can test that function out. Sweet. Um, now that I have my light shapes, I'm just gonna hide every other layer here. You know, I just hide these things. Um, what I want is to get the light shapes in on one layer, not just on the layer mask, right? So I have selected. Sorry, do you guys understand? Like, I'm just going to explain it regardless. The idea of using a layer mask, basically. Um, I'm just going to explain it. The layer mask itself here, if you paint in white is reveal and black is like um, hide. So if you paint in with a black shape in the layer mask, it hides stuff and you paint in white, it reveals stuff. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's basically kind of non-destructive, right? And you can always just call back to the mask in here anytime you want. I just had to go through that because I don't know if everyone uses the layer mask and understands the logic behind it. And you can also paint it in grays there. So it's like if I go into like 50% of this, when I paint it, there's going to reveal 50% of the layer. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, one other thing I would want to go through is my color sliders. I use the lab sliders. I find it more better for me personally than the HSB. Um, I'll go through that now before I start. So that's an L, A, E. The L is the lightness, so it's like zero to 100, right? That's your value scale, right? So I'll just call it uh, value. The A itself is, I've decided to translate that to magenta because uh, magenta and green are complementary colors, that's red and green. And the B is blue, so basically more color tones. So if you move towards the B, it's more blue. If you move opposite blue, it's more orange, which is the complementary. And if you stay, if your courses are right in the center here, zero, that's a gray. So you know, times where your hair have um, a more cooler blue or more, or, sorry, a more gray blue. So it's like a blue that is slightly more desaturated, but it's in the grays. I don't know if that makes sense. So why I use this is to be able to give me better um, temperature shift in a situation where, for example, we have a really cool shadow. Let's call this a really cool shadow, right? And I want to make it slightly warmer, but still retain the value. So I'm just going to trade again. I'm not going to play with the L sliders. I'm just going to move this slightly to the more warmer version. So moving towards the left hand is going to be the cooler version. If I move slightly to the left and to the right hand, it's going to be a cooler version of it, a uh, warmer version of it. So that's a more a warm blue there. Instead of using the color jitter, so that's a different way of getting the exact same color, but retaining the values. So the same thing with like uh, green, and like I want to make it slightly warmer, I just shift it. So thinking in temperature, but all in one value. I don't know if that makes sense too. So you don't have to have, you don't need to have multiple, like you just want to retain a certain value, or you just want to have temperature shifts in really them. I think, I, I wish I found this out more during when I was working on Kipo, it would have been easier to get like a few shifts back then. Yeah, so that's you still uh, did really great work. So, but thanks for yeah. sharing. Everyone's like, "Whoa, this is so cool!" Yeah, All right. So, um, so if imagine a situation where you have like a super warm light, like it's oh, why it's warm? But you want to get in some temperature shift. There is like, well, what if I put in some greens there, but doesn't break it? Like just put in the green and put in some red there. You know, I can probably go blue. And still one value, 
but it gives you the richness there within the colors. So we're going to use that too because if you go to the ref again, you see situations where you have um, this is probably one value. It's like almost one value, but the colors there are shifting slightly. So that's what we want to be able to do with the map sliders, basically. So let's let's get into that. Been rambling for thirty minutes, and hopefully we get to finish the painting. All right, I'm just gonna. You have um, about apply. thirty minutes. Just letting you know. So let's see you. Yeah, yeah, I'm like <laughs> wow. Uh, let's 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 see if I can do it. So I'm just gonna flatten things out now. Um, yeah, no pressure, you know. It's okay. You you do well regardless. <laughs> Under yeah. any circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to get the, the reference. Yeah, let's, let's double click it. Open it up. It's, I'm going to put it off screen so I'll be able to see it at least. Um, yeah. Let me start. We're going to make a good, big, broad wash. If you've ever worked in watercolors, you always want to start with the underpainting, as I mentioned before. We're going to have a huge, big, broad like, wash of blue. I'm going to mix brushes up just to give it that slight pump. On even filter it. Oh, shit. There's another thing else I forgot to mention. If you guys know the Fill the key on the keyboard here. This crazy looking key that looks like an S. This one. The looks wiggle? Like this. Yeah, this, this is, is that what it's called? The wiggle? I, I don't know. It just looks wiggly to me. So I just call it the wiggle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one, right? So with any brush in Photoshop, and, I'm, and I hear Clip Studio already does this, but with any brush in Photoshop, if you hold down that key and paint with it, it's going to be raised. You know, sometimes some brushes have um, like some blend modes to them and you can't use them as an eraser. But with the wiggle brush, according to Angela, you just hold it down and and you can erase with the same brush. So with any textured brush at all, so it's like I have this big wash and like, we use it. It's going to erase though. So yeah. So that's the thing that that's going crazy. to use. <laughs> I'm just going to mix these colors here. And um, like I said, because I want to stay within one value, I think that's a little too dark. I'll probably brighten it up. And here is, I don't want to cover like, my white, the white of the paper, because I want that to still show true. So I'm just going to get some down slides in here. I don't want of. Right. I think I, I think I can leave with this for now. If I turn off the background layer, you can still see. The current layer is still transparent, and I want that every single time. Um, so we would go to this mask here. I love how you're using this method because, like you were saying, um, if you wanted to do it traditionally, you had to use the uh, masking flu fluid. So fluid, this is like yes. so smart. Yeah. So now I just took the selection of the silhouette and put that into a mask here. So everything I'm going to paint within this mask is going to be within the silhouette of our building, if you remember. So I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to take um, the light and just remove that from my selection and my mask. So this is what my mask looks like now. The white part is where I'm going to paint in, and the black part is going to be hidden. 
So what does that translate into is, well, I'm just going to paint all the balance lines from the building basically as well as things in there. Oh my God, this looks watercolory already. <laughs> oh my, it's it's like we just we've just blocked most of it in here and we moved to reveal. It's going to be way way better than this. Um, I'm starting with the balance because I know some. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, sorry. Have you ever used Rebel for work, or? No, no, I've never had a chance to use Rebel for work. Okay, because I I have, and it, I think it's pretty cool. I love the um water function that you can get with it. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to get into that. Like, I think I should just quickly move on from this, so we can move into the water functions from Rebel because that's the cool part. I've also like made my own personal brushes in Rebel. Mm. And mix it with the current ones, so I could get more more um, personal look, um, look to it. So, although I'm painting in the bounce, I'm also trying to get in the uh, cools from the sky. Yeah. So I'm just painting them on this exact same layer, you know, because like the top planes here would be more cooler. Than the, than the planes that are closer to the ground. Just mixing these two brushes in together. Sometimes I'm I'm going to paint in something and still use the wiggle button, hold it down and take stuff out. You know? Only getting what? some slight sorry, Greg. Oh, will you be going over um like how you see bounce light, uh canopy light, etc. in your class too? Yeah, so Great. we have a, a specific week for that. We'll just we're just gonna make pink scenes with bounce light and pale light. No local colors. That stuff is hard and, and people yeah. take it for granted. <laughs> yeah. So, so see, it's like if I just use only one brush, that doesn't feel too stamped, but maybe I want that sometimes. You know? And if I move to Rebel, I just like dial stuff in. Um, so, I would go just directly above my background layer and in between the bounce light layer and just try to paint in um, local colors, quote unquote, of like some of the um, objects in the scene. Let me delete all this because all this is much I could just go back into my selections, which is why I have it. And I'll just like select all the foliage because like I want those greens and I'll like remove the road selection, remove the traffic lights selections too. Probably take away the people too. This is why I wanted this selection to be able to have control. Because traditionally, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's going to be all messed up. So, and I'm still trying to paint in the local colors in the same value. I've not moved my light slider yet. I've not moved it much, basically. A bit complicated, a bit more, get more warmth there. So basically, I'm thinking more of the colors that will be closer to the ground plane will be slightly warmer, and um, the colors that as they go upward, as they move upward, they become cooler basically for the greens i don't just want to pick one specific green i right? just stick to that and well, now it's starting to look like shit. so um i would get back into this this particular uh, layer and just paint in most of that again it's slightly darker because i know i'm really i'm painting in the shadow areas of my image, so I'm just going to move the values 
down a bit. Um, and the branches for now. No, 20 minutes. No, 20 minutes. So let's do this first. I, I feel like you're already getting that really nice watercolory look without Rebel. So like if people were hesitant about buying Rebel for your class, would they still be okay to just do Photoshop? Yeah, perfectly fine. Right, okay. Jim. Perfectly fine. It's like, because I don't know if anyone has actually tried to look through like the Photoshop brushes. Of um, Photoshop with the color brushes, is, there are lots, almost like a hundred, and you start to get like overwhelmed. You know? So like that, um, I want to get in some transitions here. So I'm gonna pick this beautiful brush where what it does is it loads the foreground and background color according to your your pressure. So let's say I pick up green and red. So if I if I press harder, it's gonna give me the foreground color. If I go lighter, it's gonna there's this smooth blend between the foreground and the background color there. So just a slight blend there. I want to use that this in this area of the image where the greens and the blues are blending a little bit more. Then darken that. I'll just go straight blue. Yeah, actually. Um, there's some new people that joined. If you guys just joined um, on the Warrior Painter Discord, we have this PSD file with um, Harrison's brushes. You guys can find it there and try to follow along. He's only been working on this for like 10 minutes, but it looks kind of done already. So. <laughs> um. Another thing, while we have our selections, I'm just going to go back here to the building to get like the windows in, because I need that selection control again. Um, so I'm going to gain some blue colors there. And um, yeah, just shamelessly pick from what I already have. And I'll pick this. Do you ever tweak like the flow or the opacity? Because I see that the flow is on 16 right now. Or is that I, just the default brush setting? Yeah, that's the default brush settings. I don't play around with those things. I'm not, yeah. Like sometimes I guess get I'm like, what if I break it? You know? Just get it in that bouncing game. Uh, yeah. More saturation there. It's more cool, of course. Um, transition between these two layers here. Cool. How has experimenting with stuff like this helped you on the job, um, Harrison? I, I really loved your comment about failing so that you can try new yeah. things. Yeah, so. Um, personally, Personally, I I get bored easily sticking to one style every single time. So, and on my own personal work, especially if you're working on like a project long time, you may get used to a specific way of working, and and you want to stick to it because you feel that's the only way to do things. Well, in work, yeah, like when I work on these projects, I find maybe there are multiple ways to try something out. Like, I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to go back to my foliage again because I feel like this section needs some love on the greens. Um, so I'm just going to pick that one little bit actually. Let's see what that is. Um, 
to understand that I'm not painting, I'm trying my best not to paint in the white. I'm still going to bring back the whites here because I feel to give me more contrast um, there. So I'm just going to probably go to the layer that's holding that guy just here, and I'll hold the wheel key and just like subtract that way. Yeah, sweet. Um, one more thing, I would, with the bounce light here, I want to create depth in the scene, so I just, um, yeah, just get my root selection I have. No, I don't need to actually, so it thinks it's, it's a darker value. I'm going to be on top of this because uh, I know it's eventually go cooler. But I want to get that rich warm light there towards the edges. And then just painting pure blue there and red there and it's going all going to mix up really nicely. What's that? right now I'm just using two brushes because it's just still a huge wash two or three brushes right now. And when I bring it back, I'm just gonna detail with the other brushes, basically. Um, this one is a really nice one. Right. At this point, I I feel um, somewhat happy with what I have done. Um, I'll get I'll get the selection for the street lights again. I think I need fuller tones there. Okay, so it's going to be good. So I'm thinking about the feel light. We're still thinking about in terms of value. You know? It's like to be able to bring things forward in the image. So basically, if I check my values, it's all one mess right now. But once I get in the foreground shadows, it's going to pop up. It's like thinking about the watercolors. You don't paint your darkest shadows first. You paint them last. So that same top process. Um, what I will do, I'm just going to group these guys into one layer, um, flatten it. And if you have the pro version of Rebel, there's an extension that you just click this button and it's going to go to Rebel straight. But if you don't, you could just like save this out as a PSD and open it up in Rebel. But I'm just going to click this button and we'll move over to Rebel now. So I'm going to stop sharing for a bit and share my Rebel screen. I'll click it. Get that all set. Anyone painting? Yeah, people are, but they're just not able to replicate what you're doing. So, <laughs> yeah, sign up for the class, guys. We should, we should do this. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you how. Harrison's really oh, awesome. Just, so. yeah. Oh, Harrison OVA said it's very nice to see a fellow Nigerian artist in whack. So. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I agree. Um, so we're in Rebel now. Some interesting things about Rebel, you could go check it out and like on YouTube. But some interesting things about Rebel is okay, here's one thing why I wanted to paint this transparent is because the white is the highlights of the is the light of my layer for sure. But the interesting thing about Rebel, if you've ever played around with it, is there's a water slider and there's an opposite slider and like there are blend modes where you could paint and blend just blend only so um the water is how much water you have on your brush so for example if you have so much water in your brush and uh, let's, let's get this in and you don't have so much color 
it's just going to be really, really light. But if you have less water and you brush, like in a traditional media and more opacity, that's more color, it's going to be, the value is going to, the color is going to be stronger, the value is going to be darker. Another cool thing about Rebel is like it's a tilt function. So if I, it's like painting traditionally, if you tilt your canvas, water just keeps on flowing down. But if you tilt it sideways, it's gonna like blow this way, give you this wet effect. I don't know if you guys remember the scene of Gwen Stacy's world in the new Spider-Verse movie. My entire world is made up with this thing where you just see colors flowing every single time in the background. Yeah, so we're going to use this, but I don't love tilting so much, so I try to keep it in the middle. Um, I, have, I made my own one type of stampy brush thing where I mix it with the regular Rebel brushes, and it gives me a completely different effect, basically. Um, so I'm just going to load more water because that's how I like it, to get this effect that you would never get anywhere, except you paint traditionally, though. So we're going to do this on our layer right now, or on top of it, and, and uh, get our painting to feel cohesive. Another thing I'm going to do from Photoshop is bring in my mask layers because I need them. I'm going to bring in the light mask layer, and I'm going to bring in um, the silhouette layer too. Sweet. So I want the this guy. I want the light mask leader because I just need it for selections, and I want the silhouette, and I could just um, just try this. Yes. Yeah, so, oh fuck. Okay. No, I'm just gonna do a shadow layer. Okay, we can go this. Just went back to Photoshop to inverse my selection. And I got in, yeah, just shadow version of the mask. I just want the shadow version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in only into shadow versions of our image right now with, with blues, right? So it's like going in with more darker colors. And you're going to give us a really, really Nice. So I'm going to reduce the water and like get in more opacity. So already it's like blending in most of the colors I have there. So I'm just going to make it one big cohesive wash there. And by the time we take it back to Photoshop and just paint on it again, it's going to feel really, really bad. Right now, I'm not picking random colors, I'm picking colors from my image and also pushing the values towards the cooler part. I could also go in with like more reds here on the greens, or just to get a more richness. And I'm still just painting within the shadow mask, basically. I have a few more minutes left, so let's see if I could. This and I will get in a huge shadow layer here. It's a huge wash. I'm going to mix two brushes on together as well. I'm going to remove that. One more. So all this like all these effects, I want this in the final things. I want all that. I'm going to export the layers back to Photoshop Express in this one button here. 
So there. Right, I'm going to export this layers back into Photoshop and we're heading back there in a bit. Show you what we exported. Stop sharing this and we'll move back to Photoshop. Um, if you oh, guys so. want to, uh, just drop in your work in progresses and special event chat. Uh, we could have Harrison look at it after he's done with the final touches. I hope it's not so confusing right now. I think everyone's having a great time. I think they didn't know that Rebel could do that. All right, sweet. So. What has done is brought in the two layers. So I have one layer with just the shadow and the other one where I just have the whole wetness thing. Oh, right together. So now what we're going to do is like go in and just like paint the hell out of this enclosure with all the brushes we have. Hopefully we can finish. If we, if we cannot, it's okay too. I'm just going to detail this bit here. Let's see what I have. How does it look like? Yeah. I will use um, maybe this brush or a strider. And I'm gonna it, I would have made it more of like clear drawing because this joint should shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweet. So the other thing now is like, I'm not just going to go in and detail everywhere like a regular digital paint. I'm going to pick the places I want to detail. Because if I think about it, it's like, as I mentioned, like stuff like this, we want to be able to emulate that. We don't want it to be super detailed. This guy, yeah, this guy should be good. And the other thing with Photoshop is like I could just push my like push the curves layer to get better contrast into the piece. But I know right now like the contrast isn't so great, so I could do that. Okay, get my selection again. I will go in and just like detail like the the chair here and maybe try to get in these people in a bit because I I completely forgot they were there, which is okay. Go in and detail 
that'd be. And here's like where the lab side are still come in handy because now I know like I want to work within the value range here, but still getting the right colors for the bench. I don't, I don't want to go too far away from the value of engineering it's great. Okay, let's see. Yeah, look at that guy. Um, getting some weird shit. And I'm getting some cools there to have a transition. Yeah. Oh, Give my shadow mask to. I just want to pick from all the colors that I already have laid down here. I'm really not thinking much about like, oh, the local color of this particular pool is this. I'm thinking more of like a feeling, it's like it's supposed to be warm here, you know? How do I, how do I get that? Um, anything? I mean, here, yeah. just to tie this guy. I want to try and, try and avoid some of the stampiness here. It's cool, but like, don't blend some of anything with it. So it has this fine balance there. It's, more controlled. And I could do the typical Photoshop thing where I can just like edit that guy, you know, stretch him out to give you more leading lines. And we go over the selection, but that's why we have that mask and we'll put it back in, basically. So it's still within the shadow shapes. And we take the wiggly, wiggly brush, wiggly button, and just hold that down, erase some edges. Yeah, um, we'll keep going over time. But right now, it's like now the painting is just starting because we're just going to go in and slowly detail in some places. Um, and you get maybe like the this guy, put this guy somewhere. Let me let me take a look at the Discord if anyone is there. I I think they're just trying to follow along. They're getting their mind blown. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, it's okay. Um. Get a mask back in because hmm. again, it's just thinking in terms of temperature. It's like, oh, I know it's black there, but I'm not going to put it in black. I'm going to like a more cool look. Oh. There it goes, I'm just going to this way. And all this is because I have the selection already. Yeah, you know, it's easy for me to control things. Um, and there's this one guy that's wearing a white shirt there, right? Um, oh, nice. I love Florence's past. That's so good. With this guy here, I already have a bounce light, so what I'll probably do is like just 
paint in a more cooler, cooler tone. And this shit, because you talk, if you think about it, like what? Traditionally, too? Traditionally, I wouldn't be able to do this. But now I'm bringing in more cool tones that we had lost. And I want to get in. Sorry, I was here just to blend them to each other. Um, still way more work to be done here. Are you going to still work on this after the demo? I mean, after the session? Yeah, I could still work on it after the session and just share it. I think that would be just, cool because like, it's looking like super yeah. awesome. Sweet. Um, like I said, I know the contrast is really shit right now, so I'm just going to punch it a little bit. It comes the power of Photoshop. The power of Photoshop. Um, I'm going to use a, a layer mask in there, but with uh, what's it called? Brushes too, and the mask. So it has that same what's it called transition there. I would select the pillars too because I feel. Just create more contrast on the yeah, end. Traffic light. And um, our wonderful people. I didn't hate. You guys can just believe they are there. Um, yeah. I would also go into like some areas of this tree. Get that in. Oh, nice. Okay. That's really cool. Sweet. Sweet. Yep. So, the other thing about this image is because the background is white, if I wanted to like warm it up a bit, like let's say if I just slightly shifted it, it's going to give you a completely different mood because it's going to feel like a warm underwash instead of just pure white. I don't know if that makes sense. But if I push it more, it's going to change it completely because of the luminosity of the paper. So that's what we want to retain. I mean, that makes sense for yeah. I'm just gonna detail this guys. I'll probably I'll I'll finish this after the session is done because I think I'm I'm way over time. I'll finish it before the session is done. Uh, after the session is done and share it. Probably share the PSD files too. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> Harrison is going to be teaching again with Warrior Art Camp. Uh, you can find the link on the server later. I'll drop it in. Oh, I, I dropped it in already, but I'll drop it in again. Um, he's really cool. I worked with him before. He's an amazing guy, and I know he'll be a more awesome teacher. So I hope you guys had fun on this session. You're going to be uploading this later, right, um, Harrison? Yes, uh, Yes, I will upload this later. Okay, okay. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Any closing words that you would like to say to everyone? Um, I just want to say thanks to anyone who's been able to make it here. Um, I know it's like a really tight day at work, but I really, really appreciate everyone that has dropped by today. And yeah, do sign up um, so we can talk more about how I think about these things. Because like designing these shapes is one thing, the color picking is another thing entirely. I'm using the brushes. Of course, tricky too, but that. But I really appreciate everyone that's come here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, hope you guys learned a lot. And if you guys work on your painting a little bit more, drop it into the special events chat. And um, thank you again, Harrison. Have a nice weekend. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye.